One of Ireland's top magicians is sitting beside me. He didn't come to magic the usual way by um, watching Paul Daniels on the telly. He more so um, worked in a magic shop in the States on your J1 show. Yeah, well, that's, that's the short story that I tell people, but it's not quite okay. the truth. Uh, basically, what happened was went on a J1, no money, and uh, there was a magic shop, a magic job going in a magic shop. And I went in and I was like, oh, I love magic. And I took the job. Didn't really get the job. Like, I was there two days and we were like, you're not actually a magician. And I was like, no, I'm not. And, uh, but I kind of wet my appetite a bit. And um, from there, I Googled magic shops in the area to try and find out more and stuff. And I found this shop called Misdirections Magic Shop on Ocean Avenue in San Francisco. And uh, I went there, told the guy that works there that I wanted to learn magic. And uh, his name was Joe Pond, Chinese American guy, very karate kid. And he. Rather than giving me a job, he took me under his wing and taught me loads of different card slides and different techniques and methods and principles. And I read so much and I was there for four months just reading and kind of studying. And uh, by the end of it, I started performing kind of small gigs in San Francisco. That's how it started. Yeah, and you've come back and I suppose from my from my point of view, you've kind of exploded onto the scene. Your your show at happened very the, quickly. Yeah. Yeah, the show at the Ten Days in Dublin Festival. Was 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 really really popular. You're just back from Sligo. I follow yeah. you on Facebook, so I see yeah. all of the gigs, the hometown gig. Was the that uh, hard? Sligo one was just huge. Like, right. Just it's so loud. Like we marketed it as homecoming. Now not many people in Sligo beyond my family and, and maybe a few people I went to school will probably know who I am because I actually left Sligo when I was twelve. Like, so, right. Uh, but we had to market it somehow because the Hawksall Theatre is huge. It was three hundred and forty seats and a hard place to fill if you're an unknown. So. Every poster went out was like his homecoming performance. So people, it got people kind of thinking, oh, maybe I do know him. I might know someone who knows him. Right. And uh, still unexpected though, because right before curtains opened, we were told 220 tickets were sold. Right. Which obviously I was delighted with. Uh, curtains opened and balcony was full. Everything was full. So that means 140 people turned up on the night. Brilliant. It's just on the door, like so. Yeah, sold out. Yeah. Fantastic. Happy days, yeah. Light. Um, what sort of magic do you do? I do, well the show is completely different and kind of, you know, I do a lot of corporate gigs where I'll do uh, a lot of card tricks or kind of one-to-one, -one. Oh, oh, there's Brian McFadden, do you want to pan around and get him in? There's Brian McFadden. Anyway, he's exactly doing uh, a lot of close-up um, card magic and stuff, but I do a lot of, uh, the show is all theatre of the mind, you know, yeah. it's 100% it's, uh, it it's based on what other people might think or what. Just basically, they have to think of certain things that I want them to think of, otherwise right. it won't work. Okay. Uh, there's always an out, but hopefully uh, if it goes right, they say a certain word that I need them to say on stage. Okay. The whole show goes around that. Here we go again. See, he's just magic three pints out of thin air <laughs> to be delivered to the table. Sorry. Um, magic in Ireland has never really taken off in the same way, obviously from the head of population as, let's say, the UK or America. I could name, I suppose, the best known magicians in Ireland would be yourself, Jack Wise, Keith Barry, and people like that. And then there's a lot of local magicians. And do you think there's an opportunity there for an Irish magic circle to take more dominance? Is it just the fact there that are... RTE have never kind of said, put their weight behind it and given promotion? I think, well, the latter is certainly uh, true, regardless, like, regardless of if that has any reflection on how popular or how well known it is in Ireland. But there are so many magicians in Ireland. Uh, obviously, now I didn't know that until I kind of became one. But right. suddenly, it's like once you become one, it's like suddenly you're careful not to be on someone else's territory. It can be very ter territorial, like you know. Uh, I do loads of gigs here in Harry's, for right. instance, uh, and you kind of have to find out the other magicians are like. Do you know what I mean? Like I know I know a magician who's always in Dandelion, for instance. So you, right. you kind of just want to go up and go. Oh, I'm a magician now. Uh, it's it's really weird because because there's apparently so few, but there aren't. There's actually loads, and. Uh, then there's the, the ones who, you know, there's a guy called Shane Black, brilliant British, absolutely right. brilliant, does so many corporate gigs, and uh, I I think he's incredible, like, there's the likes of him who I'd kind of look up to almost more than some of the ones that were in the public guy as much, you know, and I'm sure if he wanted, like, he could get very, he's just brilliant, like, so he could easily do into that, you know, being everywhere, that's kind of the path I've gone, like, right. but, uh, and that's just a path I chose to, to take, like, just get my name out there as much as possible. Uh, but there are so many magicians around the place, uh, so there's actually quite a lot of competition. But, um, and you were very lucky in the States in that you got to meet a lot of celebrities. I mean, yeah. looking through your Facebook albums, like, there's him, and there's yeah. him, and there's ours, there's him. It was him. just a uh, pure look, but that's all it was. Was like, it you like, using your Irish charm? Uh, partly. Okay. <laughs> sticking on a stronger Irish accent than I have. Um, right. What happened was, uh, 
I worked in a place called 15 Central Park West in New York. It's a condominium building, really posh apartments. And uh, Denzel Washington happened to be one of the residents there, same as Kelsey Grammer. And uh, uh, you'd, you'd never really address them in a sort of I know you way, like you just kind of Good morning, Mr. Washington. Like it was kind of part of the. I was just concierge guy, so right. part of procedure. Like, and you'd see these people coming in out every day, and uh, I mean, loads of celebrities lived in the place. But um, it wasn't until some of my staff mates, uh, like this guy in particular, Stephen Glennon, uh, started telling some of the residents, "This guy's a really good magician, like right. as well. Like you should see him doing magic." And then word kind of got around amongst a few residents, and then I'd be behind a desk, like doing the odd card trick for them. And then, like Kelsey Grammer was like, "Come up to my apartment on your day off and right. bring a cameraman, and we'll do it properly." So it's, from that, then Denzel watched him, and I got a gig out of doing that for uh, the, for this party. I was hosted by Samuel L. Jackson and stuff, and it just everything just spiraled. Up. Wow. And back here, I think everything just kicked off since the Meteor Awards. I did backstage at the Meteor Awards. Right. Uh, kind of just bluffed my way back there, to be honest. Like, okay. Uh, I, a friend of a friend had been doing. Had been doing an internship with the PR company, Walt Wall, I think they're called. Nice. And um, she just mentioned to me, like, oh, there might be a pass if you're on for doing some magic at it. Like, uh, she'd said, said it to someone who probably just kind of went, yeah, whatever. So I took the pass anyway, I went back there, I got paid for it and everything, and did a, this was in everyone's faces, just handed out my card. Like, and uh, I got loads of gigs from that. So back in Ireland, I kind of took off from there. And this is the first time, this is the first summer I've spent in Ireland in years, and right. uh, we decided, like, it's a big, big step to go from the transition from doing, you know, one to one magic to going on a theatre. You have to be a much bigger presence, especially yep. if you're in front of 340 people. Like you have to make sure the person in the last row has the same experience as the person in front. So it's, it's a far bigger thing, you know. You have to have a script, everything. And I always, when I started doing professional gigs, always I wanted to be able to someday ultimately have a stage show. Like right. that's where I feel like I really, I just love, I love that buzz, like you know. Uh, so, and uh, where is your stage show going to be over the next while? Where can people see you? Uh, no idea. <laughs> uh, I'll have to actually check. But uh, I know I'm at Wexford Fringe Festival. That's okay. not till November fifth. Right. Uh, I'm at a few things to see. Once kind of once we did the Sligo one, we've done so many shows across the country now that the Sligo one was kind of the ultimate one, and it went so well that I don't know if I want to take it. In take a way, it's a step down. Like, you know, right, okay. It's a great finale, the whole thing. So, uh, and I have so many corporate bookings that uh, we're we'll probably not tour the show as much now for the next few months, especially as it's coming into college season. So, I'm getting loads of bookings for uh, freshers' weeks. And, uh, I'm doing a few freshers' weeks around the place. Now, so, we're going to write a show that's kind of specifically for college students. So, very rude and okay. uh, over the top rudeness. So, I think that's all they need. I know you obviously have good skill, but how much of this is a brass, brass neck? How much of this is just oh, having so. the courage just to go and do it? It's all a brass. Well, it's all a brass neck. Like even, you know, like an Irish audience uh, know they're being tricked, firstly, right? right. Uh, it's kind of coming back to what you're saying about the UK and the US. Uh, in, a, in the US, uh, I found an audience seems to almost believe in magic before the trick even starts. So okay. they're an Irish audience, like go to it cynical and know they're about to get tricked and they, they just enjoy the experience of being fooled right so uh, that's where your brass neck comes in because you're literally walking up to someone saying I'm about to fool you now and enjoy it and like <laughs> shouldn't I mean? hmm. so uh, everything I do is a brass neck especially the stage show because some of the effects the method behind them is so blatant that my crew and stuff would, would be laughing at the fact that someone's just because we know how it works like we'd right. be laughing that someone's been fooled by it, but that's where the magic of it is like okay. Knowing that night after night you can get away with doing something very blatant, like and getting away with it. So, yeah, it's very much a brass neck. Can you show us um, um, two tricks? One that you are prepared to show us how it works, right? Yeah. I know magicians don't like doing this. I don't mind how simple it is. And then one that's just like. Okay. Uh, the pen here leaked in my pocket. Do you like the pen? Yeah. How many decks of cards do you go through? An awful lot. <laughs> uh, I ordered them in boxes of 24, so right. 24 packs. But uh, tricks like this, I, I give away a card during it. So, okay. And there's a card on the ceiling there, that's for me. Though. There is actually uh, nine of spades or something up on the ceiling. Just a pair. There's a few around this place, actually. Wait, right. right, uh, try this. So, there I take card. Have a look at it. It doesn't matter if I see it. Those. You're going to sign your name on the face. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
There it is. So you want to see that? Now what we'll do is we'll take your card. Uh, I'm actually going to fold it up so I'll give it to you. So we've got the Ace of Hearts with Dara's uh, signature on. So I'm going to take that card and we'll fold it up. You're going to bite down onto it, right? Stick it in your mouth and bite down on it. I'm going to take the next card, right? Uh, oh, wow. Whatever it is, three of diamonds. I'm going to slide my name across that. Nice and big like this. Yep. Yeah. Take three diamonds, I'm going to bite down onto that. Or, or. <laughs> oh, that is, without hairs, the freakiest thing. <laughs> oh, jeez. I'll do one more for you there. I'll, I'll show you one in a second how to do it. Alright, show the camera. Sorry, drop the whole deck there. Uh, it's my, my trick, my rules. Seven of diamonds. Like, both hands flat. And just push it in with your right hand. Uh, I'll try this. Look, seven of diamonds. I know it's seven of diamonds, but uh, which hand is your bad hand? Your left hand? Okay, a um, little bit higher. There's perfect. I'll just move that to the camera because it's enough. So, uh, I'm going to put the deck there. You're going to cover it with your uh, right hand. So, that's your good okay. hand, isn't it? So, you hold on to the deck. Slowly right. the deck will start to feel like it's starting to melt in your hands, okay? Slowly okay. it'll start to feel like that. It's okay if you can't feel it straight away, okay? okay. Actually, let me grab one card out of there. What was it? Seven of diamonds, isn't it? Seven of diamonds. Seven of diamonds. But look, watch, you just have to listen to my voice for a second. As you listen to my voice, slowly the deck starts to disappear in your hands, okay? okay. Now you won't believe me because you can feel it, can't you? Okay, yeah. Slowly the deck starts to disappear and the only card Daryl was ever holding was the seven of diamonds. Now you wouldn't believe me because you can still feel the deck. I can, I can actually the see it a little bit. Uh, actually, it starts to disappear because if you actually have a look and see what's in your hand, open it up. Ah, oh, I do enjoy being amazed by that sort of thing. You're not a man I'd ever play poker with, I can tell you that. Okay, so, actually I'll get... What, what's your name again? Anthony. Anthony, I'll get you both to make the decisions here in this way. So you're going to trick each other. I'm not going to help anything to do it. Okay. So, to begin with, just give them another quick shuffle. Just so. so, Dara, you're going to take any card you like. Don't show Anthony. Okay. Just look at it for yourself, okay? And keep it to yourself. So just okay. keep it over there for a sec. Uh, Anthony, again, just a quick shuffle here. Uh, you're going to say stop anyway, like, as I go through, right? But obviously somewhere before the end. Stop. There? Already? I can, I can keep going if you want. No. Right. Okay, so do you want me to go one more? No. Two more if you like, it's completely up to you. No. I can take one back if you like. No. No, you're happy you stop there, right? So I'll deal these in piles of three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, so it actually works out evenly. That's just a fluke, but it works out evenly. Okay, so you were happy you stopped there and you didn't want to go one more. I gave you the option to go one more, one less, two more, two less. Uh, you're happy you stopped there. So look, Dara, turn over your four. Four of hearts. And you're happy that he stopped there, yeah? Turn over the top card in each pile. And, and, and. <laughs> Pretty good. Pretty <laughs> good. Uh, do you want to know how it works? Yes. Magic. <laughs> Okay, Magic. I can cut it up. Uh, Shane, if people want to find out more about you. Go to facebook.com forward slash Shane Gillen Magic. And if anyone wants to build me a website, then I'm, cur I'm currently looking for someone. Um, I can pay them back in tricks. And he's on um, Twitter. He's on Ask Gillen Magic at Twitter as well. Yeah. Shane, thanks bit, very I'm much. I'm a bit ruder on Twitter, so. He is. He yeah, is. Follow me on Twitter. College campuses around the country near you. Yeah. All my tour dates are on my Facebook page, so you get everything there.